Hello, hello. Welcome to another Sparkling Tuesday. And we are here again talking about nailing your prices. And I realize I just need to adjust. Okay. And I hope you're having a fantastic week. A lovely um, start to your week. Do let me know what your big thing this week is. Mine is the Visibility Fair, which as I mentioned, I am uh, partaking in. So really looking forward to that. Anyways, um, right, I, I think I think that's all settled. So without further ado, let's get into how to nail your prices. So we are all facing higher costs from our suppliers at the moment, so we need to make sure that we are getting our prices right. We need to cover our costs and get profit and make sure that we're not making any losses on any of our products because none of us are big enough to have loss leaders. But we um, also don't want to just arbitrarily pick a high number t that will alienate customers, of course. So, last week was part one where we covered our costs, and that was production costs. Um, sorry, and labor costs, so the costs of your materials and so on. And also we looked at overheads. We looked at a couple of different ways to uh, calculate your overheads. We also talked a little bit about ways to pay yourself so in that we covered an hourly rate which is what went into that calculation last week and um, this week we're talking about the other way to pay yourself another way to pay yourself is with profit margin and really you should do both so we added it in in step one to make sure that you could get at least a certain number of pounds per hour whatever it is you've worked out that you need or want and then we're going to add your profit this week okay so next week we'll look at adding markup and what that is and um, how to do it and, and how much to add and so forth but yes, this week, let's dive right in. Okay, so first, okay, so we're adding profit this week. First up, we are adding, we are going to ask what is profit? In case you don't know. So profit is simply what you take in minus what you pay out. That doesn't include drawings. Most of you are sole traders so you'll have drawings rather than wages. Um, anyways, it doesn't include drawings. Otherwise it's all of your material cost, your insurance, your um, any premises expenses that you have, it's everything that you pay out aside from to yourself. So revenue or sales minus costs or also called expenses. That's it. So there's usually three different kinds of profit that people talk about. There's uh, gross profit, operating profit, and net profit. I am only going to talk about net profit because that's the one that ultimately matters the most to the small trader. The other ones are useful really for bigger businesses when people are making comparisons, when investors want to look at different ways of how things are broken down. They can be useful for you to see what kind of, uh, where you might be spending too much, where you might be having too much expenses and so forth, but, or where, 
more likely where expenses have increased um, more than maybe planned or expected. So like if you hire a coach, then obviously your expenses will increase, but you'll see that on the whatever line you put coaching on to. You might call it coaching, you might call it um, training, it depends on what you want to call it, but yes, you'll see it on the coaching line. Uh, if your software, for example, increases quite dramatically and you didn't realize it, then you can go and have a look at that. And maybe it's that you had a free trial that you didn't realize had started charging you, but you, you just you coded it as it came in, and so it's showing up there on the software line. So anyways, the, uh, those are the, the different breakdowns. So I'll just, um, I'll just write them here. And these form a, a Venn diagram. So the whole thing is gross profit. A little bit less than that is operating profit. And typically quite a bit less than that is net profit. So net is the smallest one. Operating and gross are each bigger in turn. Uh, we're not going to go into what each of them is. Net profit is the bottom line. So if you go back to the training where I talked about your profit and loss report, I've done that a few times now, um, then you will see literally the bottom line on that piece of paper is the net profit or loss. But we're just going to assume you're profitable. So net profit. So um, all of your revenue minus all of your expenses equals your net profit. These other two, they only take in part of your expenses. Anyways, um, right, so that's what profit is. Now, revenue, if you've sold, a hundred things this month at ten pounds, then your revenue is a thousand pounds. If you had a sale on and you actually only charged people nine pounds, your revenue is now nine hundred pounds. If you were donating one pound of each of those products to a charity, for example, the Ukraine Appeal, your revenue is actually still a thousand pounds because that's what you took from your customers. That hundred pounds will go in as an expense or as drawings, depending on how you actually do it. You may not decide to do it in your business name. As a sole trader, um, it is very tricky to make a charitable donation as a business expense and is very complex. And that is not what we're going into today. But And then if you had um, payment processing fees from credit card provider or Etsy fees or Shopify fees or something, and you actually maybe only got eight fifty for each of those. Your revenue is actually, and we're gonna. So you're selling them at ten pounds. We're not doing this anymore. So you sold them at ten pounds, but let's say you only got eight fifty in the bank. Your revenue is actually still a thousand pounds. Your that extra hundred and fifty pounds will go into your expenses. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, do drop them in the chat. I can just about see it, but I've decided I need to go to Specsavers. I am getting middle-aged. Anyways, so that's what profit is.
two. I'm only doing three things today. What is profit, profit margin, and how to add profit to your price. So, profit margin. Sounds complicated, maybe, but it isn't. Just stay with me. So, um, once you get that figure of your profit, profit equals net. Net profit equals revenue minus costs, right? So then if you take your net profit and divide it by your revenue, If you had any returns, then that changes your revenue. So, if you had sold 100 times 10 units and you had made a thousand pounds revenue, but you had had two returns, let's say, and you had refunded them the 20 pounds, then your net revenue is 980 pounds. Returns are just about the only thing that you would take off of revenue to get to net revenue. So if you have none, then, then your net revenue is the same as your revenue. Anyway, you just divide your profit by your revenue, and that gives you your profit margin. That sounds really abstract. <laughs> I know. So what it is is a percentage to tell you how much percent or proportion, as they say here, of your sales is a profit. So if your profit margin is 50%, then half of every sale is a profit for you, okay? So in this example, if this seller, so this is the revenue, Um, so if this seller found 460 pounds was profit, yeah, yeah, that's right, out of their 980 pounds of net revenue, you divide this by this, you get 0.50. Okay, now I need to talk to you about this because I'm a mathematician and not just a bookkeeper. Every equation out there, if you go Googling profit margin, is going to tell you that when you get to the 0 .50 in this case, you multiply by 100 and then they just silently tack on a percentage sign. And it actually really irritates me because that's not actually how mathematics works. What you're doing is you're multiplying by 1. Okay, so this is just a little tangent, just a little aside to make me feel better and let you know how numbers actually work. So 100% is 1. If you put it into your calculator, it will give you 1, maybe 0, 0.00, depending on how it's set up. And the mathematical rule is that sometimes we n would prefer to look at numbers in a different format. So we'll multiply it by 1 to give ourselves a different format. So 5, 0.50 times 
will give us 50%. And that's where that percentage sign comes from. It isn't just magicked out of the ether. So anyway, this seller, if they're making, if they've made 460 pounds of profit this month after they've added up all of their revenue and subtracted the costs and they get to 460, and then they divide it by their 980 pounds of net revenue, then their profit margin is 50% which is astonishingly good and, and would probably never happen in real life, but we can dream. So that's how to calculate a profit margin. And then, so if I say 50% is, is unrealistic, your, pro, your next question is what is realistic, right? So there's ONS data, Office of National Statistics, it's a UK thing, from the third quarter of 2019, so it's pre-pandemic, found that is 9.3% was the net profit margin for manufacturing companies, 9.4%, sorry and 14.9% for service providers. So some of you have multiple arms. Nikki, for example, has multiple um, kinds of things that she does. So some of what she does is services and some is products. Some of you uh, provide custom customization, so that's a little, that's a bit of a blend really. Uh, there are so many imaginative ways to take making and make it into services as well as products or both. So um, one example that I've picked out is memorial jewelry. So that's a product, obviously you, you finish with a, a piece of jewelry, but it's also a service that you're providing. Custom jewelry of any sort really would also fall under service. So I pulled both of those numbers to give you a handle on um, where maybe different different items, because you might make memorial jewelry or custom jewelry, and you might also make um, just off the shelf, just here I made some stuff, buy it, kind of thing. So then those would be products. You are manufacturers, by the way, because you're making things. So. Um, so that's 10 or 15 percent. Um, if you Google it, you get a lot of people repeating the recommendation that 5 percent is a low um, profit margin, 10 percent is considered good, and 20 percent is, or 10 percent is average and 20 percent is high. Higher is better for you. It, it, as long as you can sell it, it means that you're making more money. So sort of think about in that range where you need to fall. So some makes, uh, and, and you're going to do this on a product by product basis. So look at each product in turn, product or service, and think about the amount of time, energy, think about things like how many of these can I make in a month? How many of these can I sell in a month? So um, you may have a very high ticket item that you could actually somehow make quite a few of in a month, maybe 20, maybe you can make 20 in a month. Um, but if you can't actually sell 20 of those, then maybe that's uh, not the most pertinent piece of information to know at the beginning. So look at how many can you sell in a month, how many, and how many can you make. Both of those obviously play into each other. Um, think about how much time and energy it takes you. In, so if you've got something that's really, really quick and easy, you can churn it out, just, just bap, 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 and you, you, you've done 20 and you've ha hardly even blinked, then those can use a lower profit margin. So um, Walmart and Tesco and retailers like that, they have a very small profit margin because they have a lot of volume and that's the idea. The more volume of it that you can sell, the smaller your profit margin needs to be because, and I used to know Walmarts once upon a time, um, and I think it was only like half of a percent or 
uh, something, it was very tiny at that time, but half of a percent of a huge number, uh, their turnover was absolutely massive, is a lot of money. Whereas if you can't have that much turnover of a given thing because it takes you a long time to do it or you can't sell that many, then your profit margin needs to be higher to account for that. Okay. Now I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent and talk about company profit margins. So I'll come back to pricing your product, but I found this information while I was doing the research for this, and I th think it's something you should know. And it's something that you can do yourself on any company um, that files re public reports. So any limited company in the UK that isn't a micro company. So what I did was I went to Company's House and I found Etsy UK's um, financial statements. The most recent one, there you go, is for the year ending 31 December 2020 and here's their figures. So in 2019, the top line has their turnover is the same as sales, is the same as revenue, of about five million pounds. And their profit, it's that very bottom line, their net profit is 550,000 pounds. In 2020, their turnover jumped, skyrocketed uh, two and a half times to 12 and a half million pounds. But their expenses, if you look at that administrative expenses line, the one, two, third, third number down, only increased from four and a half million to five million. So their profit jumped up to 7.3 million. So how do you calculate their profit margin? I've written the numbers down over here, so I want to use these. So, yeah, I'll use another pay. No, we'll leave it. Okay, so in 2019, their revenue, four, nine, seven, five, eight, six, Six, nine, minus their costs. So I've included the taxes in this. I, I drew your attention to the line with the administrative expenses, but the taxes are the only other costs listed there, so I've included those. So the, the sum of the two was four, four, two, four, eight, eight, five. So the profit is five five zero oh, nine eight four, which was that number on the bottom line. And if we divide that back by their revenue, the first number we started with, four nine seven five eight six nine, then that gives us eleven point one percent. Okay. So that's how you find it out. We'll do it again for. 2020, and this you can do for your own company as well. So, again, you just get the um, profit, which was that bottom line on their profit and loss report we just looked at. So, I'll skip that. 7360668, and you divide it by their total revenue. 12527668. And that one comes out to 58.7%. So when you put that in your calculator, it says point oh, uh, 0 0.587. So then you do that, multiply by 100% thing we talked about, and you get 58.7%.
Etsy made out really well from the pandemic, but they've also been increasing their fees quite a bit in recent years, so that's reflected there too. So I, I just wanted to point that out because I think it's something that you should know because you need to work out where to sell your things. Okay. So the last bit we're going to talk about is actually coming back to the point of nailing your prices. profit margin to your product. So I've got two examples here for us to go through. The first one is a jewelry box. And this can be made any number of ways, but I've picked a jewelry box with a base price of 30 pounds. Now base price is what we went through last week. As a refresher, what we did was we calculated the production costs, which was material, labor, postage and overheads and we added our hourly rate or well that was labor and that gave us the base price to start with okay so we did that and now we're looking at a base price box So 30 pounds will cover all of those things, our labor, our overheads, the supplies we need to make it. Um, postage for it. Okay, now we're on step two. So that was last week. We didn't use this exact example last week, but we used the method. And we're saying we need to add the profit margin. So first we pick the profit margin. So I told you 5%, 10%, 20%. I gave you the real life example of saying um, the ONS found an average for manufacturers around 9% and about 15% for services. So this is definitely a product. We're just making a ready-made jewelry box for people to come buy. We're not doing a we're not even going to personalize this one. So let's stick with the 10% in this case. So 10% profit margin. So for this, we're doing 30 pounds times 10% or you might enter it into your calculator as 30 times 0 0.10 which gives us a 3% uh, 3 pounds sorry profit margin So 30 pounds base price plus 3 pounds profit margin gives us a 33 pound. Now this is your wholesale price. And the wholesale price is what we're getting to at this point, at the end of step two. That's where we get to. Next week we'll look at how to get from the wholesale price to the retail price and considerations that you need to think about for your business. But that's how that works. Um, so that's where we are for now. And I'll just do one more example. And for this one, we're going to do memorial jewelry. We're going to do one of these where some ashes or hair or what have you are, are encased in a stainless steel pendant that can then be made into a necklace. So this is pretty low cost. The supplies for that 
That's it's stainless steel, you know, so it's not silver or anything. Okay, so for this one, the base price was 15 pounds. And now this is more of a service. This is a product as well, but there is a service involved. So again, you have to think about how many of these can I make in a month and how many of these can I sell in a month. And so you realize that the numbers on that may be uh, lower than a product that you can just make and have at the ready. So, uh, and the value is higher. Any kind of personalization or custom work, the perceived value is always higher. So you should always think about making those profit margins higher. Uh, that helps you to see the value in yourself doing it because it can be a lot of faff. But please keep doing personalized things because I love to buy them. Anyways, so for this one we're going to say you've picked a 20% profit margin that you want. So again, you get 15 pounds times, you can type it into your calculator as 0 0.20, we already talked about that. Again, you get three pounds actually is your profit margin on this. So you'll make three pounds plus whatever you're making. Um, from uh, your hourly rate. Hi! Okay, so that's the three pound profit margin. So, to get to our wholesale price again, we get the 15 pounds base price plus the three pounds profit margin is that one and this necklace is 18 pounds wholesale and that's where we're stopping today so I hope that made sense if you have any questions do drop a comment and I will answer next week we're going to talk about um, adding markups so this is where you consider whether you would want to sell these wholesale memorial jewelry, probably you're not going to sell it wholesale, are you? Uh, or consignment, like a shelf in a shop, you're going to consider any kind of discounts or sales that you want to give, any, whether you want to give free shipping, um, you're going to add a bit of padding for your sort of one-off business expenses, and you're going to consider how much um, you may need to cover for guarantees, repairs, broken in transit sort of things. So if you, at, if you put out a sale on your, on your, um, uh, on your shop for 20% off, what you need to have is that that doesn't cut into the cost it took to make the item or the cost it takes to, uh, or the profit that you need to make to keep your business afloat. And, and obviously uh, the, the extra padding that you need for those sorts of one-off things. And so that's where you add a, a, a markup. Okay, and that's what we will look at next week. And I will see you then. Have a great day.